Well, hello and welcome to another episode of More Perfect Marketing. It's David Bayer here, and today I'm chatting with Yannick DaCosta, who is joining me from the island of Jamaica today. I'm so, so excited. All right, so I, I confession time. Um, I, as a business owner, uh, do not like delegating. I, I have been um, eager to get things done in my business, and the way that I do it is I go figure out how to do it myself. And then I, you know, slave over working through a process, whether it's, you know, uh, a, a marketing related thing, writing related thing. I mean, these are things that I do professionally, but I'm not great at delegation, which, which is a shame. And in truth, I've actually addressed this and over time have been willing to allow other people to do stuff in our, in our business. In fact, I now tell my business partner, he can't do a bunch of things. I'm not going to do a bunch of things. We're going to hire somebody who's an expert in those things to help guide us through that. And that's really uh, at the core of what I'm hoping that we get to talk about today. So, Yannick, why don't, why don't we talk a little bit about the work that you do? Okay. And uh, and then we can get into this, um, the, this subject of outsourcing to the right people for the right job at the right time. All right. Number one, thank you so much for having me, David. Like it's, uh, I'm pretty excited to be here. That's just, you know, I love talking to people point blank period. Um, so me, right. So I own this wonderful design firm. It's called YKMD and we help, um, corporate event planners, trade show marketers, um, corporate marketers, um, small business owners who have a corporate client base to save time and money when they want to basically create their marketing materials to make more money. That's that's what we do. Um, we basically take all the things that they're not good at in terms of creating design, visuals, um, understanding what works and what doesn't, and then we do it for them. And they can they basically just set it and forget it where we're concerned. Yeah, th th this is um, an area that I, as I was admitting a moment ago, you know, I would go down that slippery slope of, all right, I need a visual and I'm going to go over to, I don't know, Canva or some something, <laughs> you know, and, and I know that, well, of course you're laughing because you know things that we, you know, average business owners don't know about what we're giving up or not addressing by trying to go down a, a, a do-it-yourself path. And so I want, I want to talk a little bit about that because I think this is something that many business owners, even you know um, de departments within an organization that are responsible for the, the visual elements of their marketing materials, um, whether it's online, whether it's printed, they kind of make assumptions about the simplicity of something. And so... I, I, I want to get some insight from an expert on what we don't understand about the the visual aspects of, of the stuff that we're putting out there. So before we even talk about the visual aspects of it, let's let's run it back a bit. Yeah. You are now going to use your valuable time that you could be using to make sales as a business owner to perfect your offer, whether that's a service or a product, to design marketing materials. I just want to make sure, like, that in itself, what you're telling me is you, you, you just want to, you want to throw time out the window. You want to focus on, you want to focus on learning to do something that you're not great at and then forget to focus on what you're good at. All you're doing at this point is either wasting time or burning yourself out. Because if you're doing both, you're tired, you're frustrated, you are unhappy, you're missing time with your family, you're not hanging out with your kids. Like you're not even taking vacations like you want to because you're like, oh, I have to get this marketing th thing done. Oh, we gotta do research and development. Oh yeah, we have to um, make sure that we uh, provide the right service for the clients. It's, it's not adding up. You, you think you're getting more done, but you're not. All you're doing is burning yourself out. You're becoming a slave to your business. Your business is meant to service you. You're not meant to service your business. That's not what businesses are. I mean, and I suppose maybe some people are okay with, you know, just 
basically building themselves a job. And there's nothing wrong with that. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. But if you want to be in a place where your business is sustaining you, no matter if you wake up today or wake up tomorrow, you can't be the only driving force for it. So that's the first thing. Yeah, I, I, th I think this is a good point and, and one worth worth sort of digging a little bit deeper into. I was on a call with one of uh, our licensees earlier today, and he was talking about the fact that and not not, uh, you know, to, to necessarily speak about the the the, the expertise level, um, you know, delivery of a visual piece of work. But he was saying, you know, I realized I was spending my time doing $5, $10 an hour work because he was doing grunt there's work, that too. right? That and, too. and so there's, there's both the, you know, working on something below perhaps your what your rate. value, you know, should be in your business. The, the other piece is, as you pointed out, missing the opportunity to realize the time more effectively by by focusing on the things that matter to you personally or to your business personally. So, okay, I'll I'll let you continue. No, it, well, before I even continue, it's funny because I actually started going down that path and I was like, you know what? I don't think they're ready for that yet. Cuz I was going to be like, are you a $25 an hour employee or are you a $500 an hour employee? And a $500 an hour employee is not sitting down trying to figure out how to make Facebook ads. Yeah. They've delegated that to someone who is $20 an hour, $50 an hour, whatever that is, but like it's below your pay grade. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I I hope I remember exactly what I was going to say because gosh knows I, I might not. Um, then the second thing now is when we're talking about the knowledge base of what works and what doesn't work within that space, again, you can waste time trying to learn that and then get results in six months, or you can hire someone who already has that knowledge base for the length of time that you need it and get that those same results in one month. Like, are you willing to make that upfront investment, not just in yourself, but in your business to get you to your goals faster? So that you yeah. can spend more time doing things you actually want to do. Like, I mean, I, I, I lean back on family. I don't actually have a family of my own. Like, I don't have a husband. I don't have children. Not that I don't want them, by the way, um, for all the single men out there. Um, no, but it's more like I spent, I like spending a lot of time with my mom and my grandma. And I love going to the beach. And I love, you know, being able to work, wake up early in the morning and work out. And I like being able to, at night, turn everything off and just focus on me and just like, what I did today, how I feel, but you can't do any of those things if all you're th thinking about is all of this stuff isn't done. And I have to do all this stuff. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. I don't even know how to do it. How am I going to figure out how to do it? When you really need to be think thinking about, oh, you know, we provide really awesome accounting services, but how do we improve um, customer retention? That's what you need to be thinking about as the business owner. You don't need to be sitting over here thinking about, does my color scheme make sense? That's what I do. Pass it to me. I, I, I love that approach. And, and it, it, it gives a business owner permission to actually get out of their own way by listening to what you've just said. And, and, and you know, for so many of us, that can be a challenge. And, and so understanding that there are, professionals out there who have that knowledge who can get us where we want to go faster simply by engaging them makes total sense I, it's 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 a lot simpler than most people think i think people all like really complicated they're like oh i need to find or no let me oh i'll use i'll use myself as an example um so i have a cpa but I have a CPA separate from my bookkeeper. Mm -hmm. I don't like doing the financial stuff in my business. By the way, I completely acknowledge that there's some things I need to know every day, like how much money did I bring in yesterday? How many? How, how much money did I spend yesterday? Um, you know, what are the monthly expenses and then what is our goal? Like I need those top level numbers, but like reconciling accounts, um, filing my taxes quarter like that that's not me so I hire people to do those things right yeah. but before I even got to hiring the bookkeeper I was doing that myself and it was draining me and 
the only reason why it got done was because, well, number one, it had to get done. But the amount of time I took to do it, number one, because I just don't like to. And just because my brain isn't necessarily wired for that. I have come to realize was 10 times longer than the person I'm currently paying, who, by the way, makes a fraction of what I make. It's crazy. So, oh, so the person that I'm hiring is doing it faster for less money. That's that's awkward. That's but but, but I just wanted to do it yeah. by myself. Yeah. Now, now, you know, and that now it, now it makes total sense to relieve yourself of that. Give it to them. And actually, uh, not have the opportunity cost of of giving up that in- income because you're spending the time on you know on something that's a lower paid yeah, you know exactly. um, activity. All right, I, I want to get back to this question I was asking about okay, okay. you know I sort of. Forgot it. <laughs> so I was talking about what was it Canva and some oh. of the things that that we do on our own, but but what we don't realize we're giving up by doing it this way and. and I'm I'm now sort of interested in understanding a little bit more about the the product, the end result piece, um, because clearly, I mean, th- th- you've already convinced me <laughs> that there's even more I shouldn't be doing in my business. So, all right, I guess you're what you're talking about now is the actual design, because even even then, when you're talking about the end result for me, the end result is not the design. The yes. end result is the sale. The end result is the number of people I can get into an event. The end result is the amount of time I've saved. Like that's the end result for me. Cause that's, that's my objective is to get you, get you more dollars in the door, save you time and have you be more efficient. Right. And, and, and by, by the way, I, I want to point out because we didn't talk about this before I hit record, but one of the, the, the cornerstones of, of this particular podcast is strategy over tactics. And what you just said there demonstrates you're really tapped into the, okay, we're using my expertise as a vehicle to get an end result that is a strategic end result. So, so thank you. Uh, for, for bringing that up because I think, I think it's an important thing for, for more businesses to think about and think like you've just sort of articulated that. So honestly, David, I'm really happy that like, I'm like, we're tapped into the same place. Cause what, what that really shows for me also is that we're both successful business people that are building, not, we're not building jobs we're building self-sustaining businesses and if your objective is to build a self-sustaining business you do need to seek out the experts to help you get to that place um okay so running it back a bit there are have you ever like gone on like someone's social media feed and you were like what what do they do and you're constantly yeah yeah well it's probably because they, they're posting what they think will work or they have an entire feed of really, really gorgeous images, but they don't speak to their consumer. They don't speak to their pain points. They don't actually um, show them how they get from place A to place Z. And if you were to hire a graphic design professional who specializes in social media graphics, similar to a lot of the designers that we have. We have a lot of T-shaped designers, but I'll circle back to you on that. Um, You're going to get someone who could actually advise you on what will work best to to convert a cold audience on places like social media to someone who is interested enough to go into your marketing funnel or go ahead and grab your lead capture that then pulls them into your larger lead funnel that then somehow manage to get them, you know, onto a booked call or, you know, get that product into their checkout cart. God forbid they come out, they come out, they don't actually do the 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 purchase in the cart. We got the retargeting emails that go out like, hey, you forgot something. Yeah. Um so having having a designer is what really having a professional. I don't even want to say a designer. Having a professional, someone who is an expert in that they can tell you what works and what doesn't work, not just based on your brand and your experience, but what's happening in the marketplace. Like they have a bigger pulse on what's happening in the marketplace as a whole because they can specialize in that thing. So our designers, we call them T-shaped, right? So they can do a whole bunch of stuff. 
but everybody specializes in one specific thing, right? So we may have designers who can, you know, build logos, um, sales sheets, business cards, whatever, but they focus on building really tight, precise landing pages. We may have, um, again, someone who can do all the things I just mentioned, even landing pages, but they focus primarily on building really great social media graphics that help to convert. You may have someone who is, you know, skilled at doing print work, but they're also really great at creating promotional graphics for an event. You may have someone who's great at promoting or creating those promotional graphics, but their specialty is in building trade show booths and, um, you know, having them be really dynamic and engaging and getting you to a place where when someone visits your booth, you're actually collecting valid leads, not just everybody who's just trying to get a free pen and actually converting those leads into buying customers because they're 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 already so validated at the trade show that by the time their their information actually goes into your CRM, you're converting them like because they're exactly who you wanted to target in the first place. So at the end of it, I think a lot of business people think they know and have no idea. Myself included, by the way. My, myself included. Yeah. Um, I, I, I want to point something out because the way that you've just described these different skills within your team speaks to something that we often talk about here in terms of different types of writing capabilities, right? There's there's persuasive sales copywriting. There is content copywriting. There's social media content copywriting, all, all of which are different, ha, need to, to um, have Absolutely. a different tone, have a different hook, have a, you know, a, they, they all have a different role. And so just understanding that the diff, different visuals that we, we've been talking about, both online and offline, are all going to play a different role and have a different impact and be consumed differently and engaged with differently is really important for, for listeners to understand. Absolutely. And I mean, you can either sit there and, you know, fiddle around with trying to figure out what graphics work best to, you know, convert people when it comes to social media advertising. Like, let's say, oh gosh, this is another, this is one. There are people who will be like how um, Facebook and Google advertising doesn't work. It works. You just don't know what you're doing. Go hire someone. <laughs> it's, eh, I, I and have it's that even, conversation a lot, by the way. Yes. Yeah, no, it, it's it's <laughs> not it's not even because I mean, sure, the visuals play a really big part in it, but also the verbiage that's coupled with those visuals, <laughs> also who you're targeting matters. So, like when we're designing stuff, we start from hey, who's the target audience? Hey, what what's what copy is going to be paired with this? And then we drum out the visuals. So we also want to understand those things, but we understand how those two things coupled with our design work. So I, I want to try to make some of what you've been talking about here a little bit more tangible. And you, you um, work in a couple of spaces, live event spaces, where you're doing corporate events, you're doing trade shows and supporting the Social graphic design. Too, actually. Okay. And so I, I wonder if you can sort of walk us through an event and you you know pick pick something random or or make something up it doesn't matter so that we understand sort of the the pieces of the puzzle but i'd also like to understand uh, um where you see others go wrong and why and what they should be doing instead are there things that are happening visually out there that's sort of common that you 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 can say gosh if they only did this instead they'd have a better result and all right, so walking you through an event, I, I'm i over here thinking to myself, which event would I like to walk him through without being totally biased and having all the clients be mad? So I'm going to go with uh, start your own design business conference by the Graphic Artist Guild. So okay. no one's going to get mad because number one, it's a shameless plug because I'm a board member of the Graphic Artist Guild. Um, and number two, I was a host of that event. Uh so there are a couple of things that happened within that event or within the promotional portion of that event when it came to building landing pages, when it came to um, putting together advertising collateral, when it came to um, 
formatting email campaigns because a lot of people feel like when you send out email campaigns it needs to have like 10,001 uh branded visuals like it's now 2022 people don't care give them the message and move on um anywho but that's just my pov on it mm -hmm. i'm just the girl that you know has a really high open click rate on her emails but no big deal so a lot of that came from who who are we going to target that's where we started who are we going to target what do we want them to do and what kind of value do we want them to get from the event so once we have all of that together then we can kind of sit down and say okay well what are the best ways to communicate the information to them so that they get they understand the kind of value that they're going to be getting by exchanging their money for access because mm -hmm. that's really all this is exchange of funds for access right um, or funds for value however you want to put it once we did that identified the ways that we we're going to get to them so um it social media advertising paid and organic um understand that we're also going to use our you know 12,000 plus email list what we're going to share to them there how that messaging is going to work what kind of assets do we need to funnel all through there then we said okay well where are we going to send them to take action we need to build a landing page all right so everybody's going to get funneled to this landing page top of the landing page is going to be like hit you with information. This is what it is. This is what you're going to get. This is how you get it. Want more information? You can go below the fold, but that's only for people who aren't really sure. So under there is like the convincing stuff. Okay, the who who is this for? What's actually going to happen? Do you have testimonials? All of these different things to support that. But then there is the actual event itself. So it was going to be hybrid. So it's actually, it was going to be in person at first. Then it became hybrid. And this was all like COVID related, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and then it became just online only. We had to figure out how we were going to brand the platform we were going to use. Well, actually, before we even got there, we had to figure out what platform we were going to use, right? So this is kind of like um, looking at varying event spaces, right? Um, we have to also think about online event spaces, right? Like which one you're going to use. I actually um, had a conversation yesterday with a gentleman who had the first ever um, creative conference in the metaverse. And which, by the way, is super cool. And kind of we talked about like how engaging that was versus a traditional Zoom environment, right? or like the one I say traditional, right? Just because it's like, that's what everybody used by default. We're gonna do it on Zoom guys. But you have to think bigger picture about your location as well. And like, how is that going to be branded in terms of getting the end result for the business? Because we know what, what value we're providing to the customer. Now, how are we gonna use the value that we're providing to the customer to then leverage business later on? Like as things move forward, like are we trying to get them to be members? Are we trying to get them to pay for our wonderful Wednesday webinars that has been going on for years that people love? All the shameless plugs, guys. Um, like things like that. Um, and then we wanna do post event, right? People think the event's done and that's it. And we don't do anything else. No, no. You now have a whole bunch of attendees that you know is interested in the kind of content that you need, who you know fall into your very specific demographic, that you can now you can now leverage that familiar relationship mm. to then get them to another buying stage for another product, another thing, another conference. Next year, even I don't know if you guys know anything about like funnel hacking live. I'm just using that as an example. Or you know what? Scratch that. Let's go with Coachella. Okay. Um, that's a, that's an event I've worked with before, before you leave Coachella, they're telling you buy your ticket for next year and get a discount. They're already leveraging their existing audience. That's something that a lot of people don't do. At least a lot of businesses don't do when it comes to their actual events, like leveraging, leveraging the, the value that they've already delivered in the moment to get the next, to get the next thing. Right. Um, or I guess you utilizing the value that they deliver to increase the lifetime value of their customer. Sure. And, and uh, I mean, a, an exercise like that can fill the next event, you know, a third, two thirds easily, yeah, yeah, when, easily. The, when they have the enthusiastic audience that's, that's engaged and says, wow, I just got so much value from the time I've just spent. So it makes total sense. So what I'm, what I'm hearing from you is there are all of these different pieces 
for which there has to be, I'm going to guess, some form of visual uh, continuity. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, because you, what you what you don't want is for people to see, hear, feel a message and not recognize who it's coming from. I mean, there's we live in this digital age where there are images flying left and right, whether you're sitting in front of your computer, you have your phone in your hand, or you're just driving down a highway. There is always something hitting you in your face. But when you can see something and recognize it, not just in word and deed but also an aesthetic you have a completely different human response you're like oh this is familiar i feel comfortable i should do what it says you know mm -hmm. so that's where we are there. but i guess the part and you had asked me earlier what do i see that what do i see people not do it's not thinking about the entire customer journey and making sure they have all the assets they need to bring the customer through a familiar customer journey. Yeah. That's that's the thing that I see people not do frequently. They're like, oh, we had the event going home now. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Never come back. Well, I I, I remember years ago. I, I, I ran a Facebook ads agency back around 2010, 2011, early on. And one of the fascinating discussions about visuals and ads there were first have the ad uh, images or the, the, the colors contrast with Facebook. Oh, right? that's, oh, that's, that's and, a thing. That's and and a then, thing. and then there was the, no, 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 have it, look just like Facebook because pe people feel more comfortable with those blue colors. And if it's already familiar in the environment and, and I'm there's so that message. Wh whether these are correct or not is, is beside the point. What's well, they're important obviously, but the, the point is that these are things that are tapping into the psychology of how we consume mm -hmm. information, visual written, et cetera. And Absolutely. that there's something important about paying attention to these details. Absolutely. So it's it's uh, it's interesting because I get as as much as I said I'm not co-signing the message. I think I'm about to co-sign the message on accident. So like when you're putting together like Facebook ads, right? Because people are so accustomed to consuming advertising and that not trusting the um, companies that are putting it out, they're more fascinated with user generated style content. So when you are putting together um, social media ads paid or organic, you want to put together visuals that feel like just any Joe Schmo posted it. Mm. but still have it feel like a representation of the brand. It's a very fine line to teeter totter across because it's almost like, okay, everybody watches these TikTok videos where people are like just arbitrarily dancing. So like, why don't you make an ad that mimics that style, but still brings in the aspects of your brand to introduce that familiarity, that familiar voice. Yeah. But if you're just focused on, oh, the branding, the branding, the branding, and you just create like, you know, like a, I don't know, red, white, and blue, you know, background with like red writing, whatever the case may be, you know, happy, whatever, whatever, we have a sale. And then no one buys and you're like, Facebook ads don't work, TikTok ads don't work. Cause you're not, it's cause you're not, you don't really understand the platform that you're designing for. That's number one. And number two, you don't understand how people are responding to the platforms or your artwork. So you don't know how to make the adjustments for that. That's something that um, hiring hiring a professional would help with, by the way. In in case we didn't already know that, <laughs> that that's that's a great point. And and I, I got to say, I mean, th these are you're you're pointing out things that I have. What's the right word here? Wasted hours upon hours upon hours taking courses and watching YouTube videos to learn when I could have just turned to Yannick and said, hey, I need help with this. And, and so, you know, I think regardless of whether your expertise is 
in graphic design or in, you know, um, financial um, uh, planning or something else, we all feel that we have something in our business that others are missing, that if they were only to engage us, you know, it would be a lot easier on them. And I think that many times business owners don't think that about all of these little specialty areas uh, within their own business. But if you just sort of, you know, turn, look, look in the mirror and say, wait a second, I'm, I'm think this about everybody I serve. Well, yeah. we, we do too. Listen, I, I was guilty. I was guilty. There's a, I was talking with like one of my, I, I'm a part of like a couple of different mentorship groups. I feel like it's important to number one, surround yourself with um, like-minded people in terms of like goals, right? So you know that you're not crazy. Um, and then also surround yourself with people who know more than you about certain things. So I'm part of like different groups for different reasons, mm -hmm. right? And all of it is gears, geared towards um, how I run, formulate my business as a whole. Today we're talking about like niche in one of the groups and like how important it is to like have a niche and to niche down and to, even as we're talking about like niche, right? That's really just talking about like, who's your target audience and how do you serve them, right? There's that. But I was telling a story that I said to them, I, this is, gosh, this is another mistake that I see business owners make all the time, including myself, but I'll circle back to it a little bit. I, for a long time, was resisting me, like focusing all my marketing efforts on one specific avatar i was like everybody can use graphic design so why don't i talk to everybody and i was my my messaging was all over the place it was just like let me yell into the cloud right and i wasn't talking to any one specific person now right now when i'm having my marketing material speak specifically to corporate marketers corporate event planners, trade show organizers, and addressing their pain points, people outside of those categories are also saying, but wait, I have those same pain points. Can you help me? So I haven't locked them out at all. All I did was focus who I'm talking to and other people are overhearing and they're like, yeah, come by. Like right now, like I have law firms on my client list i have law firms i have accountants i have um oh real estate developers they're not who i focus on but they heard the message right they heard me speaking to that those specific group of people about solving their pain points and helping them and they were like but i have the same pain points can you help me and i was able to say yes because in order to help them and solve that pain point i didn't have to do anything differently than what i would do for the corporate event planner the trade show marketer the corporate marketer this, so this is the, this is a, a really really good point that you're making here and one one that i wholeheartedly agree with is that you're going to be heard more because you're focusing and 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 case in point right you focus on event planners and trade show planners and 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 the event planners but in fact anybody who's listening has the opportunity to spend 15 minutes on what what I think you must call a disco call I don't know yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, I call it and, a disco. And I, and I, I want to and and I, and I, and so if so, if somebody does want to disco with you for fifteen minutes, and I, I'm so curious why you call it that, um, I want to make sure that people know how they can because our time is pretty much up, and I I, I want to uh, give our folks uh, an opportunity to uh, continue this conversation with you directly. Yeah, so they can head over to my website, which is the ykmd.com. I know it'll be somewhere in the show notes. It will. Um, and you can click the um, work with me button, <laughs> work with us button, book a call now button. I think those are all the buttons. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, lock in the 15 minute time to chat with us. If you are ready to get started now, if you, you know, say to yourself, all right, well, I'm willing to, you know, invest some funds in increasing my marketing. We could probably show you exactly what you need to do on that call. But don't worry, it doesn't mean that you're like obligated to buy anything. We, the whole point of the call is for us to tell you exactly what you need to do, 
give you the value that you need in order to make it happen. And you can decide if you want to do it with us or go hire, you know, Joe Schmo or, you know, sit around and do it yourself and waste time and money, you know, whatever. But but I think if, if they've made it this far into the episode, <laughs> chances <laughs> are the likelihood is they're not going to be doing it themselves. And and I think that's the we point. So, we well, excellent. Yannick da Costa, thank you so very much for for hanging out. This is this has been a, a, a lively, entertaining, and really informative conversation. Um, we will have links to uh, both the um, uh, chance to book a call with you, as well as uh, ways that that you can be found um, all over the internet. Oh yeah, uh, oh, yeah. I'm on all the things. <laughs> all the things. Uh, although I don't see a TikTok link here, so we'll we'll oh, just. I do have a TikTok. I actually just started <laughs> populating it. I do. I do. Have, I have a TikTok. I, do, and, I, I don't do any dances, though, guys. And what else uh, uh, we will include is the link to your brand new podcast that I just learned about. So, Oh, yeah. I have a podcast myself. <laughs> Forgot Excellent. all about that. <laughs> well, in, in the meantime, I want to thank you for joining me. So, folks, this has been more perfect marketing if if you had fun and you want to share the uh enjoyment and information from our conversation today please pass the episode along to somebody you know in the meantime this is david bear and this has been more perfect marketing i'll see you back here again real soon take care